My name is Kevin Hancock, and I'm the CEO of Hancock Lumber Company in Maine, and I'd like to tell you how it uh, came to be that I've come to be a, a big, big champion of shared leadership and dispersed power within organizations. Our company, Hancock Lumber, dates back to the 1840s. It's actually one of the oldest companies in America. In 2010, at the peak of the national housing and mortgage market collapse, I began to have some trouble speaking, something I'd always taken for granted and as a CEO done a lot of. Turned out I'd acquired a rare neurological voice disorder called spasmodic dysphonia that affects only speech with no known cause and no known cure. On short notice, I had to figure out how I was going to lead differently without using my voice. Early on, defensively, here's an example of how I went about it. I would be traveling around the company to our different mills and stores, and someone at the company would come up to me with a question or a problem. And in the past, I would have given uh, some type of grand CEO answer, but now I couldn't. And I started simply uh, answering their question with a question. I would say to that person, gee, that is a good question. What do you think we should do about it? And having asked that question now hundreds and probably thousands of times, here's what I learned. People already knew what to do. They didn't actually need top-down direction and instruction. What they really needed is simply the confidence and the courage and the safety to trust their own true voice. That was learning number one for me. The second epiphany for me came a couple years later in 2012 when I began traveling periodically from where I live in Maine, a land full of trees, to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in the southwest corner of South Dakota, a land largely devoid of trees. At the Pine Ridge Reservation, I encountered an entire community that did not feel fully heard, that felt as if a piece of their voice had been marginalized or pushed to the side. The two events uh, created five personal learnings for me. First, from my own voice condition, I understood what it was like to not feel fully heard. Second, at Pine Ridge on the reservation, I realized there were lots of ways for humans to lose a piece of their voice in this world. Third, I got thinking about leadership and concluded, unfortunately, across time, that leaders of organizations had probably, in total, done more to limit or restrict or direct or manage the voices of others rather than to free them. And then it occurred to me that maybe the very purpose of a human life on Earth was to self-actualize. Perhaps we're all here doing the best we can just to try to come into our own unique, authentic, never-to-be-repeated voice. And then that's when it hit me that maybe the limitations of my own voice, which I only previously thought of as a hindrance or liability, were actually a blessing and a gift and an invitation to create a different leadership model, a leadership model that strengthened the voices of others, that pushed power out. And I got thinking simply about this, why can't everybody lead? 
why can't leadership be shared? And over the last 10 years at our company, we've been pursuing that dispersed power approach. And the results for us have really been quite phenomenal. Most importantly, our employee experience has skyrocketed as defined by our employees through engagement surveys. And on the heels of that, the performance of the company has taken off as well. The traditional leadership model historically has been about power to the center. In the 21st century, the Aquarian age, which is really, I believe, the age of honoring the individual human spirit, leadership is going to be something very different, is wanting to be something very different. It's wanting to be about pushing power out and giving others a stronger voice.